Okay, so, so far in class, we have talked about enthalpy, which is the heat involved in a chemical reaction. However, that's not the only form of energy we need to worry about when we're looking at reactions that occur. Um, so, before we start talking about what else we need to look at, we need to talk about something called a thermodynamically favored reaction. And again, that's a reaction that will occur given enough time. So again, as I said in class, here's your energy diagram. We don't worry about the top of the hill because that's the time factor. So as long as we're not worrying about time, um, we can just determine whether the reaction will occur or will not occur. If we want to know how long it will take, then we go to kinetics. Okay, so favored reactions. We can look at the delta H for a reaction, and in general, if the delta H is negative, then the reaction is favored, and if delta H is positive, then the reaction is not favored. However, that is not always true. So in this picture of the waterfall, water being formed from H2 and O2 is a favored reaction, and it is exothermic. However, at 25 degrees Celsius, water evaporating, changing from liquid to gas, is also thermodynamically favored. However, that is endothermic. And you'll notice in these descriptions, it says spontaneous. So a lot of times you'll see spontaneous reaction, and all that means is that that's thermodynamically favored. So spontaneous equals thermodynamically favored. Just different terminology to say the same thing. Okay, so the other thing we have to look at is something called entropy. And entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system. So if we have two containers, this has gas A and this has gas B, and right now they're separated, so this valve is closed. If I open the valve, those two gases will move around. The gases, are, remember gas phase, gases are constantly bouncing around, and the gases will mix. So this side over here, has a high state of entropy. There's a lot of mixture going on. This would be a spontaneous process because the entropy has increased. Over here, where I have things that are separated, that system has a lower entropy. So low entropy, high entropy. So what entropy measures is the randomness or disorder of a system. So the more disorderly it is, the higher the entropy is. The more ordered it is, the lower the entropy is. So in nature, things that increase the entropy, that increase in entropy, are favored over things that decrease entropy. So we always move from order to disorder. So one example would be if I have this solution. I have benzene, which is red, toluene, which is blue. If I pour these two separate beakers together, we're not going to get this where we have the two liquids just sit there and don't mix at all. What's going to happen, because these things are soluble in each other, is that they're going to mix together. So the randomness or disorder has increased because here this is just red, here that's just blue, here I have a mixture of red and blue. So entropy has increased for this system. So when we start looking at Will a reaction take place? Is it thermodynamically favored? We say there are two driving forces. So we have to look at both driving forces to know for sure if a reaction is spontaneous or, again, thermodynamically favored. So in general, there is a tendency to achieve a lower energy state, which means that if we just look at enthalpy, negative change in enthalpy, a negative delta H, an exothermic reaction tends to be favored, but that's not always true. The same thing with entropy. Entropy increases, so if I have a positive entropy, so, and the symbol for entropy is capital S, um, if I have an increase in entropy, then in general, those reactions tend to be thermodynamically favored or spontaneous. But that's not always true. I can give you examples, and we'll look at things as we go through this unit, of systems that have 
An entropy change that is negative, however, the reaction is spontaneous. It is thermodynamically favored. Okay. So again, note an increase in entropy that means there is more disorder, and that's what we're looking for in general for trying to make predictions. More disorder. So if we have a reaction that has both a positive change in en entropy and a negative delta H, those reactions are pretty much always favored. And we'll look at that in more detail later because there are also mathematical relationships between these values. But right now we're just going to concentrate on entropy. Okay. So again, I just mentioned this on the last slide. Difference in entropy. Entropy is capital S just like enthalpy is capital H. Change in, enthal change in entropy as I go from reactants to products. Okay. Um, in general, these changes cause an a positive delta a s. So these changes are positive delta s. Solid melts to form a liquid. I go from a crystal to something that has no definite structure. Solids or liquids form gases. So gases are the least orderly. The molecules are always moving around. They have the highest entropy. If I solids or liquids dissolve, that tends to increase the entropy of a solution especially in a non-electrolytic solution, which means that when the solid dissolves, it does not split into ions. When things split into ions, other things happen because now I have positive and negative charges and I have to look at whether the solvent is polar or nonpolar. So we can make this generalization, but there are some limits to how, much, how, how well that generalization works. If I increase the amount of number of gases, from the reactant side to the product side, that also is an, an increase in entropy. So if you remember back to Le Chatelier's principle, uh, when we change the volume of a system with gases in it, we look at how many moles of gas on the reactant side and product side, that's the same thing. And again, if we heat a substance, that tends to increase the entropy because now the molecules are moving around more, they have more energy. Okay, so if we want to look at predict the sign of entropy, we just want to think about this in general. If solid sugar is added to water to form a solution, I go from a crystalline structure. So, so crystalline to aqueous. And sugar is a non-electrolyte because it does not change into ions. It does not conduct electricity. So going from solid, highly ordered, to aqueous, the individual molecules are spread out, this has a positive delta S. If iodine vapor condenses on a cold surface to form crystals, that means I'm going from iodine gas to iodine solid. So I'm going from something where things are spread out at random to, some, to some, another system where things are in a definite pattern that would be a negative delta S. So qualitatively, we can look at changes and make predictions about the sign of delta S, but we need to look in more detail at the math and the mathematical relationships to figure out if truly there is a positive or negative change in entropy. Okay. 